In addition to the support of a new asset class, perhaps an allure of NFTs is just how easy it is for anyone to engage in buying and selling them. Outside of some occasional fees, the entry barriers are negligible. The process of creating an NFT and putting it up for sale on a marketplace is essentially a four-step process. Once you have some basics established though, the first three steps I described here, they don't need to be repeated. And regular use should be as easy as posting a picture on Facebook. Step one requires that you get yourself a cryptocurrency wallet. Despite how it sounds, these wallets don't store any money. They primarily serve as a repository for your public and private keys and a way to sign transactions. However, many wallets do store tokens if that's an option you want. Your public and private keys are required for you to participate on a blockchain. Your public key is the equivalent of a unique address for you that you share with others. And your private key, which you must never share, is for unlocking and sending cryptocurrencies. You need to get yourself a wallet that supports Ethereum. I use MetaMask. But you'll find a lot of options, with many of them free. They'll typically run in your computer and your mobile devices. I like MetaMask because it has a Chrome extension that makes integrating the wallet with different solutions really seamless. Once you've downloaded your wallet, you create an account. Next, you need to get yourself some Ether, the Ethereum cryptocurrency. This Ether will be required in order to purchase NFTs, but you'll also need it to pay for a variety of service fees, gas, as it's called in Ethereum. Some just once in the setup process, and others that may be occasionally required along your NFT journey. You'll acquire the Ether within the wallet application by using a credit or debit card. Some wallets support other payment methods, such as PayPal or your bank details. While the amount of Ether you need at this stage will depend on what platform and activities you decide to participate in, I had to purchase around $300 worth to cover all the gas I encountered. Once purchased, your Ether balance will show up in your wallet. The third step is about selecting a platform to buy and sell NFTs. One criteria for your selection will be the types of items that you have the most interest in. Like any industry, there are NFT platforms that attract particular communities. Popular platforms that support a variety of NFTs include OpenSea, Rarible, Nifty Gateway, and Super Rare. No doubt, platforms will come and go as time passes. Consider that a potential risk in the short term. For this example, I will choose OpenSea. Like every application, the first step is to register. But unlike other applications, you don't need to create a username and password. You'll use your wallet to authenticate yourself and generate an account. Since your wallet keys are unique, a copy of your public key is stored and associated with your account, and your private key is used to gain access by being digitally linked to the public key. The final of the four steps is either to buy or sell an NFT. Of course, it's always possible to peruse the existing catalogs of digital assets, including observing historical trades, but you don't need steps one through three to do that. If you want to buy an NFT, you'll bid on it if it's an auction or pay the amount shown if it's a fixed price. In each instance, your wallet is used to record your offer or pay the Ether due. If you end up buying the NFT, the token will be signed by your private key and recorded in the Ethereum blockchain. A tamper-proof record now exists that proves you're the owner. To sell your own NFT, say a digital picture, you'll follow the steps to create a new item in your own collection. You'll want to enter some metadata that includes a name and a description. You'll also be presented with options on whether you want to just sell one NFT of the picture or if you want to release multiples. You'll decide if you want to auction an item or sell for a fixed price. Once you've made all your selections, you'll click on sell. Doing this will automatically mint the NFT, meaning a unique token will be created for it on the Ethereum blockchain. 
Finally, if you're a Twitter user, it's now possible to buy and sell tweets as NFTs. If you'd like to observe the process or even try participating yourself, check out Valuables by Scent at v.scent.co. At this point, you might think that this is easy and everyone will be a winner. The truth is that today, there are many challenges and risks with NFTs. Let's take a look at those next. I thank you for watching that video. I hope you have found it useful and I wish you to enjoy your day.